America is indeed blessed more than any other country in the earth. America is a great big nation. It has the Mississippi River and its offshoots, natural waterways interconnected or possibly to be easily interconnected, and also a channel system along the all along most of its coastline. If islands close to the coastline of the USA that protect that protect the coastline from the sea by linking up these, these islands you create, create an inland channel this inland channel stretches along most of the US coastline of the USA and then links up with the Mississippi River and its inland rivers or the extensions and offshoots of the Mississippi River which uh, control or extend over most of the heartland of the USA or the agricultural areas providing fresh water, providing water for industry, providing water for crops, providing ch transport, cheap transport, almost free transport, that bring things from one area to another. And this links up with the channels along the coastline that, that all of the USA is covered by these channels to bring, to produce one thing here, bring it to there almost at no cost and very, very easily done. And this is a blessing from heaven also sagubrous climates and, uh, and and everything else connected with that. The USA also has as reserves of minerals of petroleum, shale petroleum and so on. The USA has been blessed more than any other country in the earth. And also Amer the USA has a large population, internal markets, and this too was part of the blessing that, that Abraham, Isaac and Jacob were promised that their seed should be exceedingly numerous, and they are in the USA and elsewhere. So as we said, Britain, Britain, the USA extends from Britain, borders and proofs concerning the ten tribes that apply to Britain, by extension also apply to the USA. The English language has a lot of words that are similar to Hebrew words. A good portion, or not all of it, but a, a linguistically significant portion of the English language has Hebrew roots in it. However they got there, whatever the explanation is, this is a reality. And this indicates something. And so do archaeological findings indicate something. So does the previous history of uh, the Britain and the British Empire indicate something. And whatever it indicates, it also applies to the USA because the USA in effect is an outgrowth. An extension of Britain, can out of Britain. Even though the, most of the USA, the push on the people of the USA, come from other areas, even those who come from the rest of Europe, in different ways, so through, uh, through population studies, through an analysis of dem demographic statistics and proofs, we can show that even that those who come from other parts of Europe were in effect separate on, to a great degree from the peoples they lived amongst and they were in effect also descendants of Joseph from the other Israelites going home, coming back. So a good portion of the USA can be attributed to the tribes of, of Israel and especially to the tribes of Joseph and amongst Joseph to Manasseh. Also have rabbinical proofs, rabbinical proofs. Amongst other things these are uh, in this case, based on linguistic analysis made by rabbinic, rabbinical commentators, made by commentaries who weren't, as far as we know, did not know about the lost in tribes. We're not necessarily interested in them. They were simply analyzing the Bible, analyzing the text, showing different points in the text. So one of them, Rabbi Shimshon Raphael Hirsch, one of the greatest rabbis who was known from the, in, from the 19th century, in the 1800s, Rabbi Shimshon Raphael Hirsch, in effect said that the name Manasseh means responsible representation. And responsible representation is a, a principle of the American Constitution, of American life. Responsible representation. And we have another similar piece of evidence from Rabbi M. Schlanger who analyzed the Bible, to, uh, commentating on the Bible. And he pointed out that in the Bible you have leaders, in the time of the judges you had leaders from different tribes and he pointed out that whenever one, a leader came from the tribe of Manasseh his, his power was limited, he was not an absolute king like leaders from the other tribes 
He was given the task to be the Tsar, to be the prince, to be the judge for a certain period of time and to fulfill certain tasks. He was more like a president than a monarch. And the presidential system is characteristic of the USA. We also have Menashe ben Yisrael. Menashe ben Yisrael. Menashe ben Yisrael was a Jew, a descendant of Jews in Spain. Or Maranos, that is, Jews have been forced to become Christians, but they, or many of them, kept Judaism a secret. And in the 1600s, he left Spain and went to the Netherlands, where the attitude was more liberal, there was more freedom, they were more tolerant, and he was able to become Jewish, to declare himself as a Jew, and he studied and he became the equivalent of a rabbi, of a sage, and also he was a, an intellectual by the standards of his time. He read other books, he read numerous books, he knew a lot, and he corresponded with the leading savants, with the wise men, with the knowledgeable people of his era, of, with kings and queens and intellectuals all over Europe. And he also went to England. At that time, England did not allow Jews in this country. Since 1290, the Jews had been expelled from England and they still had not been allowed to enter the country. And he went to England and he persuaded the English or he initiated, initiate the English to study the subject. They set up committees and so on and they came to the conclusion that there was no barrier, no legal barrier against Jews coming into the country. And in fact, Cromwell, Oliver Cromwell at that time ruled in England, he was a Puritan, and he is actually in favour of the Jews, he considered the Jews a protected people, one of the peoples who was responsible for. He also considered the English to be descended from lost in Trumps of Israel. And so did John Sadler, his secretary, who wrote a book about it. And Cromwell appointed these uh, committees, and the committees reported back to him, so Cromwell told, uh, or decided, Cromwell decided that, there was no need for uh, any special legislation. In fact, any special declaration or legislative action could be detrimental, could be negative, because if you wrote something down, others could come along after him, put circumscription around it, put all kinds of limitations and conditional element and conditional requirements in it. And it's better that they just be allowed to come in, because that was what the law allowed. And that was what was done. So in addition to that, Menashe having initiated that or helped initiated that, incidentally he was good friends with Cromwell. They corresponded. Cromwell gave him a pension. Menashe had no money of his own and Cromwell helped him. After Cromwell came Charles II. Charles II, even though he overturned a lot of the reforms and of the changes of Cromwell. In this case, he backed up. He supported what had been done. He was very vehement about it because whilst he had been an exile and made friends with Jews, he also believed the Jews should be allowed to come and he gave support to this action. So ever since then, the, the Jews had been allowed to come into England. The Jews had become allowed to become in, into England. And Manasseh and Yisrael had been responsible for initiating this process. And so, what else was Manasseh ben Yisrael known for? Manasseh ben Yisrael was known for believing that the lost ten times were among some Indians, American Indians, as a common belief at that time. The American Indians were new people. The, the, the Western, especially the people from Europe, were interested in finding where the lost ten tribes are. And the, 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 these American Indians were reported to have certain customs and attributes that could indicate they were from Muslim tribes. Also, uh, Manasseh in Israel met another fellow Morano who claimed to have gone to uh, Ecuador, Venezuela, uh, after gone to a portion of South America, and then met, met natives who spoke to him in the Hebrew language. Uh, and he swore that this is what had happened. So Manasseh accepted that. So Manasseh wrote a book saying the Lost Ten Tribes were in 13 different areas, and one of them being America. And he wrote about it. So he was wrong on that point. He was wrong on other points. He also thought that that within a few years, within a short time, the end of the world would would uh, approach would be at hand, and the Messiah and everything would change. The Messiah would come and everything would change. So he was wrong on that. 
and he was wrong about the Murray Indians on the whole. But, but, he also backed up with what he was saying with the verses from the Bible that he understood and others understood to be indicating that in the end John Sebastian Jobs would return from America. And on that point he was correct. The verses are still there. And they, still, and they prove it. The main point concentrates upon the Isles of the Sea. Isles of the Sea are also translated as being the Isles of the West. That numerous verses in the Bible say that the Boston tribes will return from there. And he understood this to be America, and this was a major proof, but he had others. He identified Tarshish. The uh, Boston tribes are uh, recorded alongside Tarshish. He identified Tarshish as being the, the Atlantic Ocean as the rabbinical commentators also mention. So, and the ships of Tarshish were their sure ships flying, sailing over the Atlantic Ocean. And in Isaiah 60 it says, Surely the isles shall wait for me. And the ships of Tarshish first, to bring your sons from afar. So that shows that lost and tribes will come from the west. They will come from ships of Tarshish flying, uh, going over the Atlantic Ocean. And it also said, uh, quotes from Hosea. Hosea said, they shall walk after the Lord. He will roar like a lion when he roars, when his son shall come trembling from the west. The lost and jobs will return from the west. They shall come trembling like a bird from Egypt and like a dove from the land of Assyria. Let them dwell in their houses, says the Lord. And again in Isaiah 60, it says, who are these who fly like a cloud and like doves to their roosts? to their cots, to their pigeonholes. Surely the isles shall wait for me, for the ships of Tarshish first, to bring your sons from afar. And he goes on. So as we said, Manasseh was correct concerning the verses and the other verses which he shows with different with commentate, commentary and, and so on. And the lost ten tribes are amongst Western peoples, so amongst in, in Western area over the Atlantic Ocean, especially over the Atlantic Ocean in America, and they will return from there. At that time, there were hardly any people in North America. And now there are. Now the verses are, are pertinent. Then they were not. The verses also speak about flying, returning by flight. It says, It shall come trembling like a bird from Egypt, like a dove from the land of Assyria. They, Assyria and Egypt the places of the Thompson first exile to. From there they went to the west. Also Isaiah 60 says, Who are these who fly like a cloud and like doves to their pigeonholes? Talking about the ten tribes returning by aeroplane by flight. In those times there was no, no aeroplanes, there was no flight. But now there is. Now the verses are pertinent. This too is a proof. Someone was esoteric. So, uh, somewhat involved, but worth noting is that Isaiah chapter 41, Isaiah chapter 41, up to 43, 45, he speaks of the ten tribes in the end times returning. He also speaks of Cyrus. He, uh, he combines the two elements, but uh, most of the, this section is concerned with ten tribes returning. And he, he refers to them taking tribe slaves from Africa in chains across the sea. And that in the end times these slaves will acknowledge the peoples who are the lost in tribes who have captured them as being the chosen people of God and that God is in them. And we have this. Most of the black slaves were taken by Englishmen across the sea, taken to the Americans. In America they became the black people Afro Americans and they are still there. And uh, they are, whatever their case at present, in the end times, according to this prophecy, at least a portion of them will repent, will acknowledge their fellow Anglos as belonging to the ten tribes of Israel, and that the God of Israel is with them. That is what Isaiah says. And this is pertinent to them, and not pertinent to anyone else. So this too is a proof. We have a great rabbi, Rabbi, rabbi Moshe Schreiber, 1962. The Rabbi Musha Scriber, 1762-1830, also known as the Hatim Sofa, and he 
understood from different biblical passages, from different sources and, and end times. The areas of Western Europe and the areas of the Atlantic Ocean, uh, in effect reaching up to America, will belong to Israel. That the holiness of the land of Israel will spread to those areas and those areas will be incorporated in the greater land of Israel. And this is consistent with the lost ten tribes being amongst the peoples of those regions. Thank you.